So I didn't skip Skypea. Yeah, I kind of get why people would skip it because like I, I feel like nothing really major happens, but in my opinion, to me, it was more like, if I'm gonna watch a thousand episodes, I might as well not skip anything. So if you did skip Skypea, you probably missed Luffy's satisfying punch to Bellamy, the pink Pegasus, Tarzan, Zoro, Nolan, and Kalgara's bromance. Robin being freaking cute. This is really the arc where you get to know Robin and see how she fits with the dynamic of the crew. Before we even get to Skypea, we kind of meet this crew, Bellamy's crew, and Bellamy is so freaking annoying. This man made me so mad, okay? Because, you know, the Straw Hats are super cute. They're just like, okay, we're gonna find Sky Island, wherever this is, because they found like, you know, debris literally falling from the sky. Nami's log pose pointing to the sky so they're like there's got to be something up there right because they went to jaya to look for more information on the sky island they were like looking around asking people for help and then bellamy is just like coming up with his crew like this is the new age we don't have dreams here you know one piece no such thing city of gold no such thing and then in my head, I'm like, fight them, <laughs> punch them right now, please. And it's funny because going to Jaya, Nami was like, don't fight anyone. And then Zoro and Luffy were just like, we're gonna beat everyone up here. But then later on, Luffy and Zoro decide, you know, we're not gonna fight anyone. Even though they got freaking beat up, they really decided, you know, fighting them isn't gonna change anything. They're still going to be hard-headed. They're still gonna bully us. They're still gonna make fun of us for, you know, believing in Sky Island, believing in the One Piece. We're not gonna stoop lower to like their level and even like blackbeard who we didn't even realize was blackbeard at the time praised them for you know not fighting back which i think was really cool the whole time we're just like i need them to like literally fight bellamy and his crew because they ain't shit you know it's funny because the whole time they think that their their bounty is like really low at the time i was like please I just need them to fight, okay? I need someone to punch them. As the Straw Hats were preparing to go to the Nagup stream, Bellamy stole gold from Cricket, and then Luffy was like, I'm gonna get your gold back, okay? So Luffy goes back to Bellamy and is like, give me the gold. And Bellamy's like, no, I'm not gonna give you the gold. Uh, starts bullying Luffy, beating him up with his devil fruit powers, which is like, okay, whatever, who cares, man? And then Luffy finally has enough. Literally one punches him, like Saitama one punches Bellamy, sends him, I don't know, eh, you know? And then everyone in the village is like, oh shit, his 100 million bounty is actually a thing, you know? They back off. Luffy gets the gold and then goes back to cricket. At the time, I was like so like, ugh. I don't know if anyone else watched like Vinland Saga, especially Vinland Saga season two. Spoilers, Thorfinn's going through this whole thing where he's like, I'm not gonna fight no one because, you know, fighting isn't gonna lead to anything. But the whole time, you're literally like the whole season, you're like, Thorfinn just beat someone up because you gotta show them that they ain't shit. These bullies, these people that are bullying you right now, they ain't shit. Thorfinn is so much stronger, so much more experienced than all these people this man can wipe out armies and you're like sitting there like please just like punch someone right now that's how literally i felt during that time but luffy actually punched him and it was so satisfying it made me so happy after all that they go up into the sky using the knock-up stream and they head up they reach like this beach area that literally looks like a resort and they meet Konis and her dad. And it was like really cute. They're having fun and everything at the beach. Really welcoming. You're like, oh, here's some food and explaining like Skypea, lita lita lee, what this is, what that is. And I'm just like sitting there like, hmm, this is too chill. They seem suspicious. It really felt like, you know, Avatar, um, The Last Airbender when they're in Ba Sing Se and then the girl, the girl is like, There is no war in Ba Sing Se. I really felt that vibe and I was like, Konis and her dad are so freaking sus. They're low-key evil. We kind of realized later on that it's like a rule that they have to do or else they're gonna get zip-zapped by their god. Another thing about Konis that I thought was really cool was during like the whole war portion of the arc, she and her dad go to the edge of um, Upper Yard. There's this whole part where the soldier like comes to the edge of Upper Yard and tells Konis like, yo, Enidu is literally going to destroy all of like Skypea. We gotta warn the people. And then Konis and her dad are like, oh no. And then her dad is like helping him. And then Enidu like electrocutes Konis' dad and the soldier. And I was like, no, but there's a part of me that was like, you yeah, know, 
No one dies in this show, so he's, he's probably fine. Later on, we kind of like realize Endidu's electricity or like lightning bolts and stuff is literally just like static electricity. It will like knock you out for like two seconds and then you'll wake up and you're fine. And then Konis is, is just like, this is the moment that will change me. So this girl has so much guts. She takes her boat all the way back to Angel Island and is like, guys, listen to me. I need to tell all of you to evacuate right now because bro, Endidu's gonna kill all of us. Destroy the whole island. And then everyone's just like, we literally saw you earlier today, like, girl. So none of them, like, believe her until she's just like, No, I do not see Enidu as our god. And then she didn't get electrocuted. And everyone's just like, oh shit, maybe she's right. So then they panic and then they evacuate. I thought she was really cool for doing that. She was, like, really cool. Like, I love that moment. It was really sick. You know, because the whole time she's just, like, an innocent little girl. In that moment, she's just like, guys, my dad died. I don't want anyone else to die. I will save you all. I need all of you to evacuate. And it was shit. So Kona is super cool. Dad dies, but is actually alive and is thriving. So next, we're going to talk about Cricket slash Nolan the Liar. So Cricket is like this goofy guy with a peanut on his head. Is it a peanut or is it like a nut? Acorn? Is it an acorn? I feel like when you meet him, you're kind of like, oh, this guy's kind of goofy, right? They don't really like question why his house is like in half why half of it is like literally a cardboard castle you just don't question it because you're just like mm, well it's just one of those weird things that this show does you know haha <laughs> but i think it was really brilliant how they they realized that upper yard was a part of jaya because of that other half of the house that they found and i thought that was like really cool i was like dang it all makes sense mont blanc cricket is basically a descendant of nolan the liar it was like a folk tale basically this guy who discovered a city of gold who told the king about it they went to the city of gold location saw that the city wasn't there and then nolan was like yo it freaking sank bro and then the king was like ha, i don't believe you and then executed him for lying and then he was just like known for generations to be a liar which i think was so freaking sad he was just a genuine person who wanted to help people you know we all know the story about nolan the liar the true story how he you know followed the sound of a bell during like a was a storm found jaya and chandorians they were not welcome but they found like this you know the sick kid and was like oh my god i know this sickness i have an antidote saves them while you know like the whole time they were sacrificing people to the gods hoping that you know this is what is going to save their people but you know nolan's just like that's not true because this dude is just a snake is a big snake what is really true is that you know these people are sick and i have the antidote and this is it even at first they didn't really welcome nolan they welcomed him after he saved many people and then again they welcomed nolan to the land and like gave them gold and shit for everything that he's done for them and then he, nolan's like okay can i just stay here a little longer i want to do more research on the land he discovered that these trees was what was making people sick but then he just cut them out down without you know really communicating hey like this these trees I'm just gonna cut them down. He just cut them down, you know? Shandorians and, you know, the leader, Kalgara, was just like, you cut down our sacred trees, like, that we pray to. It's, this is, like, unforgivable. You better leave the island. They didn't even communicate that this is why we're kicking you out. We're not gonna tell you why, we're just, just leave. And I feel like there's just no communication. I think Nolan should have been like, hey, these trees is what is making you guys sick. We have to cut them down. If that happened, then there would be no issue. Life would be happy. Or even if Nolan did just cut the trees and, you know, if Kalgara was just like, yo, this is really upsetting. Why did you guys cut down the tree? And then have Nolan explain. Nolan just left the island, was like really dumbfounded. Like, oh, like us and the Shandorians were literally besties yesterday. Why do they all of a sudden hate me? Like hate all of us. Like, I don't understand why, but life keeps going on. And then Kalgara learned the real reason why Nolan cut down the trees and was just like, wait. You know, it was like a whole K drama moment. A whole K drama moment. Nolan and his crew on this on the sea, riding into the sunset. Kagura at the water. He's like, "Don't go away. I'm sorry. But are we still friends?" Nolan's just like, "Yes, we'll always be friends. I will follow the sound of the bell one day and return." And that was like the last time they they ever seen each other. But you know, Nolan went back to his home and was like, "Yo, this is." what happened in my travels, I literally found a city full of gold. And then the king was just like, hmm, 
hmm, I have interest in this place. Let me come with you guys and I will bring my own soldiers instead of your crew. They went to the location of Jaya and they discovered that the whole city of gold was gone, just vanished. Theorized that it fell into the sea, but as we know, the knockup stream literally put it into the sky. Nolan, you know, was made out to be a liar because when the king went there, he was like, there's nothing here, you're lying. And then Nolan's just like really upset because he didn't lie in the first place and he doesn't know where all his friends went. Like if they're okay, they executed him for lying and he died really just heartbroken because he's just like, where is my friends? I hope they're okay because he doesn't know where they went. In my perspective, I feel like there's a part of me that's kind of like, maybe it was a good thing. Even though they still, the Shandorians did face a lot of issues up in the sky Pia, there's a part of me that's kind of like, oh, maybe it was a good thing that the king didn't see the city of gold because he would have just taken everything as well. Like the same thing would have happened and it would have been really sad because it would have been Nolan that like brought the king there. Cause you know, that king oh, didn't have good intentions. Obviously he's trying to steal all the gold from there but yeah i think that story was really freaking sad and it was a really interesting story about like you know friendships and like understanding two different cultures and like you know making change and as a leader kagura changing his views to end up saving people and like you know apologizing for sacrificing so many people but at the end of the day they didn't know better and then we had wiper and the shandoria you know in the story they all fought back to like fight for their land i think it was really sweet the climax of the whole story how although wiper is main goal was to take back upper yard he also did think about kagura's story and you know his friendship with nolan and was like it's really important that they ring the bell because the bell signified the end of the war between Chandorians and the skypeans as well as you know kind of telling nolan hey we're all right we're okay. So I really love that Luffy also kind of was able to help with that because I feel like in that moment, you know, ringing the bell was like the last thing on everyone's mind. Everyone's mind at the moment was like, we kind of have to save lives here, you know? The Skypeans, their home, and you know, everyone involved, the Straw Hats as well, all their life is in danger because of Enaru. But I feel like in the moment, Luffy never forgot Cricket at all i think it was like so sweet of him to like not forget but like still get the job done he still saved everyone but at the same time he really prioritized and ringing the bell because he was like cricket has to know that we made it here in one piece uh -huh. and that the city of gold is here this is where the bell is and you can stop looking because we found it it exists and your ancestor was not a liar he was a truther now we have to talk about eneru okay i feel like in the beginning of the arc you know the straw hats saw the debris of like a fallen ship from the sky finds out about skypea blah, blah, blah all that stuff is happening they see like giant silhouettes in the sky in that moment i was like okay is this our next enemy because how the frick are they going to fight giants we had arlong we had crocodile those guys easy easy peasy giants and I've never seen the Straw Hats so, like, scared before because they literally were like, okay, we gotta run. They're the type to, like, never, like, run away from a fight. But, like, at that moment, they're just, like, they literally just looked at them, at the giants, and were like, there ain't no way we're gonna beat these guys. We gotta go. So then after we got, like, a taste of their god's power, which was, like, literally an electric beam from the sky that will fry you into, like, dust. So at the time, I was watching with my little sister, and she was asking me, Okay, so what do you think his power is? In the moment, I totally forgot about devil fruit power is. In my brain, it's just like, oh, we're like in a different world. I didn't really have a face to their god. So I was kind of like not really thinking much about it. I was like, I don't know, bro, like electricity, the fuck? And then my sister was like, okay, so what do you think its weakness is? Because last time I predicted that crocodile's weakness was water, right? So at the time I was like, okay, well, this guy literally took upper yard for himself, right? So I'm like, earth, because you know, they're in the sky. This only upper yard is the only place with earth and this is his domain so obviously it's gonna be earth right my sister was just like what are they gonna do take dirt from the ground and just throw it at him i'm like girl i don't know man i don't know i forgot about a lot of things but you know luffy obviously rubber electricity doesn't match so you know i kind of figured it out later on finally met enadu and it turns out he's this guy that's like a freaking loser <laughs> like okay i don't know what's his motive he just wants power he's just like 
I am above all. The reason why he wants to take down all of Skypea is because he's like, People shouldn't be living in the sky. Only God should. Even though he's just a normal guy who ate a devil fruit power. You no, know, he's just a normal dude. Nothing special about him, you know? And I'm gonna go to this place called Endless Verse. At the time, I was like, what even is that, bro? Like, where are you going? He was referring to the moon, and I was like, this guy really is a moth, you know? He's literally a moth to a flame. But you know, legend says he's still traveling to the moon to this day. I did think he was a really tough opponent obviously because you know people would fight him and he would bounce back by any way he can even you know Zoro and Wiper fought him using sea stone and like a projectile it made um Enedu like knock out for a second but like he was able to restart his heart by himself with his electric ability and I was like there's no way we're gonna defeat this guy the moment he actually had a weakness it was just like it was game over and like there's no way like you could see how weak he really is against luffy that whole ending part with enedu versus luffy how luffy like collected all of like the electricity using like, the random metal ball that enedu stuck onto luffy's hand he like took all of the electricity before it could like hit sky island and all the people on it collected it all and like took it on to himself and like i thought that was so freaking sick that was so cool but with the straw hats i think out of everyone i think usopp really stepped up in this arc i'm really proud of him because you know like in the beginning i was really like ah, i didn't really like usopp I'm not gonna lie i got kind of annoyed by that but i'm really proud of him because he really did step up even though you know he's always like i gotta go i'm not gonna join he really did his best even his new thing usopp ah. <laughs> Out of all the straw hats, though, I really, really, really loved Robin. Like, this is really the beginning of Robin really being in a big arc with the straw hats as a member. But I think throughout this, I really did like her because Robin's like pretty quiet in, in general. I would say not really Sundere, but like she's just really quiet, doesn't say much. Whenever she like smiles at like Luffy, you know, being Luffy, it's so cute. Like literally, it's so cute to me. When I think about like Robin, she probably been through so much shit. And you know, um, when I think about, you know, how we left off Alabasta with Robin and how she's like, no, I want to die. You know, like this is it. Don't want to live anymore. And then like, you know, her joining the like, Straw Hats, like maybe like gave her a little bit more life in her. Like, you know, maybe it's okay to live. And like, she just like, she just seems really happy to be with them and it makes me happy too because it's just like it's so freaking cute and i love seeing her just smile you know at like the gang just being themselves and i think it's literally the cutest thing ever robin became my favorite character so at the very end after like the whole war and everything robin finds like this poneglyph on the golden bell she reads it and she even sees that goldie roger was there and i was like dang this man really been everywhere. I think it's crazy because Goldie Roger went on the Sky Island. No one thought it was a thing, right? He he was there. He already been there. Chandorians decide to give the Straw Hats like this whole pillar of gold. This part was so funny. I was dying. You know, Robin's like all happy delivering this big pillar that like like a hundred people are carrying to the Straw Hats and just like, look, look what I got, you know? But she's just walking to them. Meanwhile, the Straw Hats are like grave, not even grave robbing, but like robbing the insides of this gigantic snake. And then they see Robin in this huge mob of people and they're like, oh shit, they're gonna get mad that we're grave robbing them. We gotta go. And Robin's just like, why are they running? Like, I have this big ass pillar. She's like, okay, well, I guess they don't want the pillar anyways, right? So then she's just like, okay, I guess they don't want it. And then she just runs after them. And that whole part was so funny because Robin's just like, huh? What do you mean? But you know, they literally gave up this big ass pillar of gold, go back to the ship and then meet Konis, her dad, and then they're led down using the balloon octopus thingy, which I think was like super cute. And I just wanted to mention how every time they leave an island, you know, saving whatever issue is happening on the island, they leave and it's like super rewarding. It feels good because it's like, they just had like their goodbye party and everything. The music of like, we are, is starting to play in the background everyone's like running away from all the residents they're like oh well we gotta go even though you know we saved you guys we're not gonna accept your thank you we're just gonna go because we're pirates we're gonna steal your shit though runs off and it goes into the sunset it just feels really good because it feels like they're like superheroes not really getting their things that's not what they need they're just there for the adventure they're there for the gold like helping them is like literally just like a side mission and it just feels so freaking good after it makes me happy if you skipped 
Skypea, I genuinely think might as well watch it, you know, because it was just a cute adventure. Nothing major happened. I met up with some friends like like two months ago, I think, and um, I was talking about how I started One Piece. I was like really proud. I was like, yeah, guys, like I started One Piece. And I like even had my phone wallpaper as Luffy on the Going Merry, and I was like showing them. And you're like, you're a fake fan. You didn't even watch anything. I was like, literally my heart. So sad because I'm like, what do you mean? And you know, like the end of Sky P is literally like episode 200, you know, versus like the whole show is like 1000. And maybe I did just like, you know, reach a tip of the iceberg. I even watch the fillers, but like, isn't the point of One Piece, you know, to enjoy the journey and not just rush to the destination? Isn't that what it is? I'm taking my time with this show. Like, I'm just going to enjoy every bit of it. If that makes you mad, that's a you problem. So all I'm gonna say, I really like how like the odd things early on in the arc like that just don't make sense, make sense later on and it's just so satisfying, it's so satisfying. Like the giant silhouettes, how they were like, oh my god, it's like giants, we gotta run away in the beginning and then in the end they reveal like it's like a myth. The shadows is actually shadows of like the residents in the sky island, which was made to be true because we saw like the little silhouette of like Luffy being all happy and stuff like that and it was so cute. Literally my heart was like, this is so cute. It was such a good arc, it was fun. But yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time in Water 7. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen any of my other One Piece videos, I highly recommend them because they're kind of just fun word vomit. I think that's it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Yay!